Okay, what I want to talk about here uh, right now is how to become a DME supplier in Medicare. And this is really important if you are uh, someone who treats any type of physical medicine injury. Uh, first of all, let's talk about a few things. DME stands for Durable Medical Equipment. And simply put, in more lay terms, it's medical equipment or a supply that you could use repeatedly. In other words, it's durable. Uh, it could be used over and over for a period of time. And Medicare does not want uh, physicians going into the business of being a full-blown DME supplier. However, they do want to give them the opportunity to stabilize their patients while they're in the office. So they will allow physicians to go ahead and uh, prescribe in the office and fit their patients immediately for things like canes, crutches, uh, folding wheelchairs, and also uh, orthotics, any type of orthotic. And Part of that are lumbosacral orthotics, and this becomes a big uh, issue because the most common conditions that we typically treat when we provide, this, regardless of whether you're a chiropractor or a medical doctor, a physical therapist, occupational therapist, the conditions that we most commonly treat uh, are listed right here. In fact, uh, for chiropractors, four out of the top five uh, diagnoses are lumbar related, and we typically treat Medicare patients for these things like degenerative disc disease, lumbar disc syndrome, herniated disc, low back pain, spinal stenosis, radiculopathy. Uh, if you treat Medicare patients, you undoubtedly see this, uh, whether it be cervical uh, or lumbar, you see a lot of this. Again, 80% of the cases that you're going to see are going to be uh, lumbar uh, related. And these people are very different than the younger segment of the population in that their spinal muscles are weaker, they're not as strong. So uh, Medicare knows that, and that, first of all, it's medically necessary that these patients have increased stability if they do have an injury or, uh, or if they have surgery, they have a herniated disc or they have severe disc degeneration, they have sciatica. Uh, you need to immobilize the spine to let the patients heal. Uh, maybe sometimes they can't come in for treatment all the time. Uh, or if they have a flare-up of back pain, you can go ahead and give them uh, an orthotics that will go ahead and stabilize them. And it's real important to understand, too, that you know, just like a little white back brace, that's something that is not very durable. It could be used over for a period of time, but not for a longer period of time. And it doesn't really provide much therapeutic relief other than just giving a little bit of a localized um, uh, stability and reducing lower back pain. Uh, there's a little bit of difference uh, between being a supplier and being someone who is a, a provider. And I have a lot of chiropractors call me up. They'll hear me do a national teleconference, and they'll say, well, you know, I called my local Medicare intermediary, and they said that I can't uh, be a, a Medicare provider. And you have to understand a couple of things. First of all, your local int Medicare intermediary is not going to be the insurance company that's going to be reimbursing you. So, for example, if you happen to be in Texas and Trailblazers is your uh, local intermediary, your, they call the MAC, uh, the Medicare carrier in that area, you are not going to be billing trailblazers for the DME. So that means that if you call trailblazers up and ask them if you can become a DME provider or supplier, they're going to say no. Uh, the fact is, is that you have to go and make this application through the National Supplier Clearinghouse and uh, get approved by them. They have a site inspector that comes by. Uh, medical doctors, uh, MDs and DOs, that is, nurse practitioners, I believe it's extended to them. They can just go ahead and write a script and bill out to Medicare. There's no pre-authorization that's required whatsoever. Uh, Medicare has a list of products that have been submitted and that have been reviewed and appropriate code has been assigned to those products and I'll show you that in just a second. And they also have a fee schedule so you don't have to try to figure out how much Medicare is going to pay, uh, pay for that. And uh, it, the fee schedule is set up uh, per each individual state. And again, I'll show you that in just a second. But it's important to understand that a chiropractor can act as a supplier but not as a provider. What that means is that your patients will have to go to their MD or DO nurse practitioner and get them to sign off on a script that has all their information that the DEA would uh, require them to have on their script and have that in the patient file among some other things that, that go in there and I've put all this together in a program. The question is, is it worth it or not? Uh, or do, you know, is an MD really going to sign off on the script for the patient? And the, the answer is absolutely. Uh, uh, I, my experience is that uh, from talking to doctors who do this, about 80% of the time they get it done. And if, if they can't get it done, uh, that 80% of the time, then maybe you can go ahead and refer them over to an orthopedist that, uh, that the patient may need to consult with. Because let's face it, if the patient needs a lumbosacral orthotic, chances are they probably should have a consult 
with someone as well if they have a permanent instability um, in their spine. Uh, but anyway, that clears up the air that chiropractors can be suppliers. You just have to get the script from the MD uh, or the DO. Now, as far as medical necessity goes, uh, there are four, uh, I'll talk about this a little bit, there are four Medicare, uh, or excuse me, there are four insurance companies that reimburse for orthotics. The, uh, one of them, which is Cigna, came out with a clear-cut definition of medical necessity. And when you read through this, you realize that there are a lot of your patients that fall under this umbrella. And the reason why this is important to go through this is because a lot of people feel uncomfortable with doing this. So they don't know if they're crossing a line. And as long as you stay within these boundaries, you'll be A-OK. -okay. Of course, if you're a medical doctor, you know, an MD, DO, these are the boundaries you have to make sure that, that, you, that you stay within. Now, if you're a chiropractor, the, if this is all falling on the MD's shoulders. So uh, if you want to refer a patient over there, you want to have a letter of medical necessity and maybe a picture of some or an MRI report or an x-ray report. Uh, letting them know maybe if you have an outcome assessment uh, or a range of motion assessment, you know, send that over all with the, uh, the patient. And my experience has been that most medical doctors will do, you know, whatever they need to do to uh, help the patients out. So, uh, but this is what Cigna says, Medicare will reimburse for orthotics when ordered by a treating physician, which is the MD or DO, to one, reduce pain by limiting joint mobility. So if a patient comes in with severe lower back pain or neck pain, and you simply want to go ahead and reduce the pain by limiting joint mobility, that is medically necessary. So you can see that this is a very broad umbrella. Uh, now, that being said, don't just take every single Medicare patient and go ahead and prescribe uh, one of these for them, especially when you see the markup on this. It's, it's kind of remarkable uh, in and of itself. Number two is to facilitate healing uh, following an injury or surgical procedure of the spine or related soft tissue, or three, to support weak spinal muscles or deformities of the spine. And that could be something like a herniated disc or degenerative joint disease, um, a pars defect, spinal anesthesis, things of that nature. Okay, so again, that's the umbrella, that's the, the threshold, if you will, uh, for medical necessity. Uh, once your patient, uh, you determine that they would uh, possibly benefit from this, what you wanna do is search for the appropriate product. Now, I only uh, have done this once because there's only one that I use for lumbar uh, spine. But there's a website uh, to go to, and I, I have all of this in the program, How to Become a DME Supplier. And you punch in where it says uh, the HCPCS, or it's called HCPCS code. In this case, we punch in LO631. And what it would do is come up with a list of uh, different suppliers. And when they, uh, the name of the company, then you'll see the, uh, the device name and the appropriate code to use. Now, there's a very long list. I just focused in on this because the top name there, Spinal Rehab Solutions. I actually use that SR500, and I can comfortably uh, give this to my patients and know that if I get audited by Medicare or any doctor, if, if you happen to get audited by Medicare, and you say that, well, it was suggested I use this SR500, here's the reason why, because they submitted their uh, orthotic to Medicare, and Medicare said the L0631 is the appropriate code to use. Now, they don't endorse any uh, product, but what they do is they take a look at it, they sample it, and they, uh, they assign uh, the appropriate code. So in other words, when, if you give out an SR500 to a patient and you bill out LL631, you know that that is the accurate code to bill for uh, that uh, particular device. So I go to the Spinal Rehab Solutions website. This is uh, a picture of the uh, cervical orthotic and the lumbosacral orthotic, and this is a wonderful thing to give to your patients because they can put it on and then they can inflate it themselves and as they, uh, as they pump it up, they uh, will uh, get a tremendous amount of relief and they'll really notice it when they deflate the lumbosacral orthotic. Uh, it's absolutely remarkable. Uh, I put one on myself and I really wasn't having any lower back pain and then I had it for about 15 minutes, 20 minutes on and I deflated it and it was amazing how I could just really feel the effects of gravity on my spine. Um, so this is what I recommend that you uh, give out to your patients. It, it does cause uh, some distraction in the spine. It's a, it's a wonderful device to use. Uh, as far as the reimbursement goes, Medicare has their own fee schedule for this, and it's broken down by state. Now, I've just clipped out uh, certain states right here <clears throat> from Rhode Island to Vermont. But uh, say in the middle there, you see Texas. Uh, they pay, they will, uh, Medicare will approve $955.96. Now, Medicare will only pay 80% of that, 
and the patient's responsible for the other 20%. Uh, the Virgin Islands, there's a little bit more. They pay over $1,000 for it. And the low end, you can see there, Rhode Island, Vermont, $928. I really can't tell you why there's the disparity from state to state. Uh, it really doesn't seem to uh, make any sense to me whatsoever, but I'm sure there's some uh, bean counter there that figures this all out. Uh, so there's not just one broad fee across the board. But uh, anyway, uh, now this is like the point where you know people say, well, uh, it sounds to me like you're you know uh, telling me how to take advantage of Medicare, especially if you're a chiropractor and you're only used to getting paid maybe $25 a visit, and you say, well, in, in one you know swoop I can go ahead and make uh, $700 profit because the, the the uh, orthotic here from Spinal Rehab Solutions, this one right here is about $265. And uh, when you come over here, you can see that your, your overall profit is going to be about $700 on this. But look at it from Medicare's perspective. You know, this is a patient that uh, may never need spinal surgery as a result. They might not need to go to physical therapy or get ESI injections. So it is well worth it for them. To, uh, to spend that one time amount of money to go ahead and, and fit the patient with this product. By the way, uh, the reason why Medicare does review these products is because they want to make sure that they truly are durable. They can be used over and over and over again over a period of time. I think Medicare will pay for one of these every three years. So you want to make sure and ask your patients, has anybody ever prescribed to you a, a lumbosacral orthotic? Maybe even show them something uh, like this. And there are a lot of different types of orthotics that are out there. The one thing I would admonish you not to do is just get the cheapest thing out there. You think about your patients. You're going to make more than enough money uh, and profit uh, on this. So do the right thing for your patients. Do the right thing for yourself. Uh, I've seen, by the way, this product uh, advertised uh, on TV. It's a different version of it, and I, I called Spinal Rehab Solutions, and they currently have a, uh, a, a lawsuit against this one doctor pitching to, you know, something on TV for like 50 bucks. Uh, and I, I want to tell you that, you know, I can assure you that that doctor has not sent, the, you know, his product into Medicare to be reviewed and has a code assigned to it. Only order products that come off of the, the uh, Medicare list. And in the program that I put together, how to become a DME supplier in Medicare, I have all of this in there. Now, whatever supplier that you want to use that's your business, this is just my recommendation. I just know that I've used it. It works great. Patients like it. Uh, it might cost a little bit more than other comparable products, but I've had people send me samples of their products, and frankly, I, you know, I'd be embarrassed even to, to, to you know, even present it to a patient. Uh, I, I don't think it's going to do anything for them. By the way, the lumbosacral uh, orthotic here, it does come with removable A uh, to P panels, so there's an anterior panel that velcros into the front, and there's a posterior panel that actually slips through the belt and goes around. So if the patients need some more rigid support, they can get it that way. Okay, so there's the fee schedule uh, once again. It's well worth your time and effort to do it, and, and if you don't want to do it, then you know, send, send your patients on to somebody uh, who will actually take care of them. Uh, if it's something that you, know, you don't feel comfortable doing, then you know, by all means, don't do it. But uh, certainly make sure that your patients get the, uh, the treatment, the care they need. And again, don't go crazy with this. Don't just start giving this to every single patient that walks in your door. Uh, you're going to see that I, I would say the majority of your patients probably will warrant uh, one of these uh, orthotics. And uh, it's a great way to enhance your revenue by providing a service that your patients both want and need.